Charlie Kirk has said a lot of racist things. Like, oh, what racist things has Charlie Kirk said? No, no, I want to We're going to have a little bit of a dialogue of what racist, what, what racist things has Charlie Kirk said. Last night, Kyle Rittenhouse spoke at the University of Memphis at a Turning Point USA event. You just saw him act like a tough guy at that event, but he didn't keep that act up very long. Before we show you how Rittenhouse turned and ran, let's take a journey through the deeply racist mind of Charlie Kirk. And now keep in mind, these clips that we're about to show you are just from this year, and it's only March. This United story and the DEI story yes. hits so hard because we've all been in the back of a plane when the turbulence hits or when you're flying through a storm and you're like, I'm so glad I saw the guy with the right stuff and the square jaw get into the cockpit before we took off. And I feel better now. Thank you. No, I mean, about like, that. you want to go thought crime? Like, I'm sorry, if I see a black pilot, I'm going to be like, boy, I hope he's qualified. The great replacement strategy, which is well underway every single day in our southern border. Is a strategy to replace white rural America when MLK was alive. His approval rating was rather low, right near 30%. Uh, so his contemporaries did not think very highly of him. In fact, even in the decades that followed, it was a big lift to get uh, it to become a federal holiday. Now he has an approval rating near 96 to 98%. How is that possible, Vince? It's one of the most popular people. He's as real as Aslan from Chronicles of Narnia or Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Only something fake and fictitious could get a 96% approval rating. So you can see that Charlie Kirk is racist. So let's see Rittenhouse's response to the person who asked a question about Charlie Kirk's racism. Take a look. Okay, I'll answer the question of racist things he said. He says we shouldn't celebrate Juneteenth. We shouldn't celebrate Martin Luther King Day. We should be working those days. It's called Katani Brown Jackson, an affirmative action hire. He's telling nonsense about George Floyd. And he said he'd be scared if a black pilot was on a plane. Does that not seem racist? I don't know anything about that. Oh, yeah. They answer no, no, no. Does that seem racist? Is a yes or no question, Kyle? Well, after all the things I just told you, would you consider that hate speech? I'm not going to comment on that. Deflection! 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 Yeah! Jenka, we've got more, but I want to bring you in here. I mean, but how is it satisfying? Is it enjoyable? Is it embarrassing? What do you make of this? Yeah, so uh, let's do Rittenhouse first, and then I'll do Charlie Kirk. Uh, so, uh, my favorite part of the Rittenhouse thing was. Like, hey, let's have a conversation about it. Oh, okay, well, here's the ways that he's racist. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Wait, what happened to the conversation? That was like three seconds ago that you said that. And then my second favorite part is a dog. I'm like, oh, I didn't know Rittenhouse was blind. Is that a seeing eye dog? What's going on, right? Or oh, he just loves his dog. No, he brought on canine protection. Okay, brother, okay. And later, like he did a video about like, oh, thank God I made it out safe. From what? Black people asking you questions? <laughs> I mean, why don't you tell on yourself a little bit more? Okay, but thank God he thought he was safe because otherwise he might have killed everybody in the building. Because you know, if you throw a plastic bag at him or he hears a sound somewhere or he sees a skateboard, that's it. The self defense. Oh, are you still catching feelings about that, Kyle? You know who's not? All right. There's two people who are dead because Kyle Rittenhouse is a coward. And he went there with a weapon, thinking he was a tough guy. And the minute he heard a loud noise, he turned around and shot the first person, who it turned out hadn't shot at him at all and had thrown a plastic bag at him. That's the kind of coward Kyle Rittenhouse is. So it's not at all surprising that he would say, "Oh, let's have a conversation. Oh God, I forgot I'm an idiot and can't answer the simplest questions. And then he runs. So that's very on brand for Kyle Rittenhouse. Okay, now Charlie Kirk. I don't know that he gets more racist than, well, you know, if I see the right stuff, that was his co host uh, with a, you know, square jaw, you know, the right stuff guys were all white from back in the day. Then I feel uh, that I could trust that pilot, and Charlie Kirk comes in. I mean, if I see a black pilot, I think, you know, we're not safe. How is that not racist? <laughs> I can't figure out a way that it's not racist. So anyways, 
And but that wasn't my favorite from Charlie Kirk. My favorite was, you know, uh, Martin Luther King's contemporaries didn't really like him very much. Well, you're right that in the South, where they lynched black folks and set dogs on Martin Luther King and did a cavalry charge against them and at, at the Edmund Pettus Bridge and beat him and other civil rights workers and murdered some of them. Yes, those contemporaries were not overly fond of Martin Luther King trying to get equal rights for African Americans in this country. But the fact that you use that as a mark against Martin Luther King might give you a sense of the mindset that Charlie Kirk has. The explicit mention and endorsement of the great replacement theory, a you know, white nationalist conspiracy theory, that I thought was the most alarming out of Kirk's comments. That is something that a lot of Republican conservative commentators, Tucker Carlson would dance around it, but would never really name it. He would go right up to the edge, right up to that line, but he wouldn't cross it. Kirk is just saying it. Yeah, this is the great replacement. That's what they're doing. And that is radicalizing people in small towns like the place that Kyle Rittenhouse came from. I just finished a book last week called Exerbia Now. It comes out in a couple of weeks. And it does a great job describing the radicalization that we're seeing in places like where Kyle Rittenhouse came from. Small town America, they're consuming Charlie Kirk, they're consuming Ben Shapiro, they're consuming Tucker Carlson. In the absence of local news, robust local news, they turn to these figures who just scaremonger and fearmonger, make them think that immigrants and people of color are coming to replace them in their almost entirely white communities. And that fear and anti-black, anti-immigrant hatred is driving them into the Trump camp, but even beyond. It's like leading to militia activity, which is, I assume, what Rittenhouse was trying to replicate when he drove across state lines with a gun to protect a car dealership. It's really horrifying stuff. But it was enjoyable to see Rittenhouse you know, stick his tail between his legs and run off stage. But then he decided to post through it and he just can't take the L. We've got a couple good tweets from last night. He said of the incident, wow, Memphis is an interesting interesting city. And today he's been, he's been posting excuses for why he ran away, including no one forced me to leave the stage. The event was scheduled for 30 minutes and I was on stage for 30 minutes. And he added, what I find hilarious is that everyone is saying I was chased out of Memphis when in reality we went to this restaurant called Huey's, grabbed some food and nobody seemed to care or notice. I think we're seeing two different things. It looked like mid answer, someone ran on stage and whisked him off. Jenk, am I, am I blind? Look, uh, everybody just saw the tape. So you guys can make up your mind. You don't need me or Jordan to interpret it for you or Kyle Rittenhouse to interpret it for you. It seemed like he said he was gonna have, he wanted to have a conversation. They asked him a tough question and he ran. Did it look like they were like, oh, right, we guys, last question, because we really gotta go after 30 minutes, I gotta catch him. No, no, he didn't say that. He said the exact opposite. He wanted to have a conversation until he got one tough question. And he says, Memphis is an interesting city with the sweat coming down. Like, if you're a right winger and you're known for what Kyle Rittenhouse is known for, you didn't think a question like that would come up. You didn't have an answer prepared. Because remember, this guy's, what is he famous for? He's famous for going to a Black Lives Matter protest and shooting and killing two people. And that made him a folk hero for some people on the right wing. They're like, oh man, he went there and shot and killed those people and got away with it. We love this guy. I know, I don't know why, but there's some people who have mixed opinions on left, right, etc. But there's something triggering about Kyle Rittenhouse. Anyway, like some folks who are like, oh, I just love that he went and shot and killed those people. They love defending him. Huh, self defense, self defense. Technically, technically there was a plastic bag. And later there was a skateboard. You coward, you go in there with a, 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 an assault rifle. You don't know you how to use it. You don't know when to use it. You pretend that you're a tough guy, you're defending things. And the minute, remember the original thing was he thought he heard a shot ring out. He had no idea if they were shooting at him and it turns out they were not shooting at him and it was in the distance. He turns around and shoots the first guy behind him. So even if you're a gun owner and a gun advocate, 
Doesn't that sound like the worst coward you've ever heard? What happened to protecting the property? You didn't protect the property. All you did was panic and kill those innocent people. And you guys, for those of you who like him out there, you made him a folk hero for that? And look at that, does he have any substance? Nothing, zero, can't answer the simplest question. And if you don't think Charlie Kirk is racist and you don't think he is, etc., then aren't you pissed at him for not being able to answer that simple question? Nah, he ran like a bitch that he is. And let me explain one last thing about the great replacement theory. The theory is that the Jews are bringing in immigrants to replace white people. And Charlie Kirk said white people, so it's not like he was hiding it. He was very, very explicit and clear. And remember in Charlottesville, they chanted the old Nazi chant of the Jews will not replace us. The Jews will not replace us. And now those Nazis that were marching in Charlottesville, they're being amplified by people like Charlie Kirk saying, Oh yeah, the immigrants are gonna replace the white people. And guys, last thing on this, the great irony here is that they don't have to hate Latinos, they don't have to hate immigrants. In fact, Trump right now is beating Biden in the Latino community by six points. There's no reason why Republicans shouldn't welcome them with open arms. And a lot of Latinos are people of faith. And they would make natural allies for Republicans. Hard workers came here for hope and opportunity, believe in the American dream. But they're just too racist to take them in. Oh No, these brown people are trying to replace us. Okay, yeah, 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 that's Charlie Kirk, that's Kyle Rittenhouse. Now you know who they are. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.